My name is Patrick Colvin and I'm with the Friends of the Historic Variety Theater and Westtown Community Development Corporation as their board president. Uh, got involved with the Variety Theater project here in 2005. The building was actually built in 1927. It was built as a vaudeville and movie house uh, by three local businessmen, Abe Kramer, Meyer Fine, and Sam Stecker. Uh, it was then sold by them to uh, Warner Brothers in 1929, early 1929, uh, and it was a Warner Brothers movie house until 1954 when the Supreme Court ruled that movie studios could either do production or distribution and they opted for production, thus selling their uh, distribution points, uh, this being one of them. And uh, it was a first run movie house through the 30s, 40s, 50s, into the 60s. In the 1970s, uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Coase uh, bought the theater, uh, never owned a movie theater, uh, had both projectors, knew he could get the prints, and bought this th theater and ran it as a second-run movie house for about the better part of 10 years. Uh, and in addition to that, once uh, we got into the 1980s, uh, they entered into, the family entered into a uh, agreement with Belkin Productions, which is now Live Nation Clear Channel, to uh, have shows produced here. Uh, so basically all of the bands of the early and mid 80s uh, that came through Cleveland played here at the Variety. Uh, bands such as In Excess, Romeo Void, Missing Persons, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Metallica, and very famously Motorhead, uh, which played so loud that they uh, actually cracked the plaster in the ceiling and had the show shut down uh, due to the extreme volume. It was not the, uh, the reason, but it was the impetus that got the ball rolling to get the uh, facility shut down for live music. Uh, there were several bands that played afterwards. Uh, they played in December of 84, and I believe the injunction, uh, court injunction was in November or December of 1986 that shut down the venue for live music. Uh, after it was uh, live music, then it was a charter school for a brief period of time. Uh, and during that time as well, it was also a very successful um, haunted movie theater where they would show uh, scary movies on the screen and then have actors come in. And basically, you'd walk through the theater uh, and get spooked by, you know, creepy characters all around. Uh, and that was very popular actually for several seasons. Uh, following that, uh, the building was, uh, the theater was actually the Cleveland Wrestleplex. Uh, and they actually had uh, early pay per view here. Uh, and they also had uh, wrestling events here. And after that, it was closed, and I believe that's the early 90s. So you're looking at, uh, we've been now 2019, it's been closed for almost 30 years. Uh, the plan, as it is currently, is to uh, restore or uh, renovate and restore the theater as well as the building. The building is 51,000 square feet, a little over. Uh, theater space is about 21,000 square feet. It was a 1900 seat movie house. Uh, unfortunately, uh, economics being what they are, we can't just have a single screen movie house. That's just not economically viable. Uh, although I'm a purist and I would love that, but reality being what it is. Uh, the plan is to have the first floor be a destination restaurant with all of the architectural elements in place. So you're basically be sitting in a theater auditorium uh, with the stage and uh, orchestra pit and uh, so we could have some live entertainment on that stage. Uh, and then the balcony will be walled off and be a large screen cinema hopefully of about 150 seats or so. Um, the plan also includes uh, to take a row of seats, the, the uh, current uh, original seats, take a row of seats out and restore them, put them back and have what I would call a 1927 seat. So when you come in for a, a movie or a uh, production here in the, the mezzanine theater, uh, you would have the ability to say, I want a 1927 seat. And what do you get for a 1927 seat? Well, you get your name up on the screen, you get audio recognition, and perhaps you get uh, you know, free popcorn for the duration of the movie or uh, 
we'll, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year, so we can come up with 52 different promotions uh, and just kind of interchange them, you know, maybe free uh, non-alcoholic beverage service for you and a guest for the evening, uh, things like that. So uh, the idea is to have large screen, uh, or a large screen here and have uh, movies that need big screen treatment, things like Giant, uh, Gone with the Wind, these the kind of movies that really deserve to be put on a big screen. And then throw in a few more recent, maybe uh, original uh, Star Wars. And then in between having the movies, we will do a variety of entertainment. It's the variety theater after all. So anything that would work in a 150 seat uh, venue would be a possibility here. The exception being, I mean, we're not going to do loud amplified music. Um, that is part of the rich history of the variety. Um, however, that is part of its past and not its future. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't have entertainment such as uh, combos or uh, duos, comedy shows, variety shows, children's theater, things of that nature uh, that would work very well in this space. Uh, we'll also be putting in a lift system, otherwise known as an elevator, so that folks that can't do the stairs to the mezzanine level will have a way to get up here. The idea is to stick with all of the architectural elements because it is uh, the building is listed on the National Register. We also want to try and be as LEED certifiable as possible so uh, lighting will be LED, low flush toilets, all those kind of things that as far as running a facility will make it as um, not so much profitable but at minimal cost. Um, always being aware of the cost of because it's a big building and costs a lot to heat and air condition and things like that so all of those things will go into it. Uh, the apartments, there's 13 apartments currently. Uh, the plan is to have 10 apartments. Some of the apartments are rather small, so we're going to condense a few of them uh, to make them larger because they're, while they're easy to rent, they're hard to keep rented when they're a small, very small apartment. Uh, so that in addition to the fact that in 1927 you didn't need laundry facilities, so we're going to convert one of the apartments into on-site laundry. Uh, the storefronts also will be uh, renovated and I'm hoping we probably will have maybe seven or eight storefront operators depending on the operation that we land here at the building. Uh, once we start reconstruction uh, and renovation, restoration, uh, the plan is to have it uh, completed within a few years. Uh, so hopefully if we can start 2019, early 2020, um, you know, we should be online by 2022, hopefully. Um, I'd love to see the first movie showing here uh, on Thanksgiving weekend of whatever year we open, only because that is the, uh, when the theater opened, it opened in 1927 with a uh, movie called Hula, which featured Clara Bow. And for those of you who don't know who Clara Bow is, I would suggest you look it up on the internet. Uh, she's a fine, uh, actress who, uh, very pretty woman, uh, and she uh, was the it girl of 1927, 28, even into 1929. Certainly by the mid-30s her star had fallen. She was with the movie that we showed here at the Variety. It was very scandalous at the time because uh, she did a partial strip tease and she showed her knee, which again if you look at history, women didn't show their knees in 1927. Now you can't get people to keep their clothes on, but you know, that's a whole nother story. But uh, the idea is to have the facility up and running uh, within a few years once we get all our funding complete. Um, that's been a very long road, uh, better part of going on 15 years. Uh, and, you know, in the meantime, we keep the building stable and secure. And uh, uh, we've had people come in do uh, photo workshops, we've had individual photographers in, uh, we've had several, several ghost groups in, and we continue to host those as well um, throughout the year. So, you know, it's a community asset and we're hoping that uh, with the uh, restoration of the building that uh, it will be, continue for the next hundred years and be a community asset. Uh, really think that this is a center spoke uh, and it will help tremendously all along Lorraine Avenue as we redeveloped uh, the, uh, the theater portion and the building itself. Because this building is 
she's a gem. She's a little tarnished, but she's a gem. So stay tuned.